Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. who does not believe that Jesus is the Son of God and God raised him from the dead. It's hidden. It's hidden from the eyes of every person on the earth that doesn't believe in Jesus. Now, God doesn't want it to be hidden. He said, I don't want anybody to perish. I want everybody to believe and to come into the knowledge of the saving grace of Jesus. Amen? So he doesn't want it to be hidden, but it is hidden. It's hidden from anybody who doesn't believe. They cannot see that all this is available and all this is accessible and you can have a, a, an incredible life if you believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead. So I pray today that, that we would realize there are hidden riches that he wants you to have. And, and, and the thing is, it's done. It's a reality in the spirit realm. But even believers, even though you believe, I think sometimes there's a, there, there's a, a disconnect in that the way that we've been brought up, I, uh, somebody had on Facebook, it was either this, I think it was this morning, it was a joke, and it was like uh, this person was poor as a church mouse. Well, wh why, why, would, why would we even talk that way? Poor as a church mouse. It, it's like, it's an indication that people in church or that people that equate with, that we should be poor. There's nothing further from the truth. <laughs> we shouldn't be poor. We, we are more than overcomers. And the Lord says, all this supply is yours. And I want you to not, I don't want the mystery of the gospel to apply to you as a believer. I want you to realize that all that is accessible. And if you believe, I'll start changing the way that you think. You think, you think in an inferior manner, but I haven't, I haven't given you that inferiority complex. I continue to tell you who you are and what you can have. But if you continue to think that it, I'm not worthy or it's not to be, or I came from the wrong place, I came from the wrong town, I came from the wrong family, all those things, or, you know, I messed up so very badly that I can't have that. There is nothing further from the truth. And the Lord would say, why don't you just, okay, so you are where you are today. Why don't you let me begin to change the way that you think? Why don't you begin to get into agreement with me so that you can access these things that I tell you they, they are yours. There is a mystery to the gospel. There is a hidden truth. But it's hidden to those who don't believe, who don't want me to be their savior, which is, which is the worst lie you could ever have, amen? <laughs> because how many have tasted and seen that the Lord is good? But he said, let me begin to transform your mind. Let your, let your mind be transformed. Did you ever know somebody that, that even though they believe in the Lord, they would not let the transformation happen in their mind whereby they 
whereby they can believe him for more and more and more and begin to taste and see that the Lord is good and begin to see him move in supernatural ways in your life. Amen? So are you open to that? The Lord wants you to be open to that. And so uh, look, at, uh, look at Acts 4.33. Because there's great power and there's great grace and there's great favor. When you begin to really believe, you know, I did a couple of funerals this week, and you know, if, if you ever are on this side looking out at people, you can tell people that have faith versus those that don't have any faith. You ever know that? <laughs> have you ever been in front of people and you can tell who has faith and who doesn't have faith? It's not like you want to know. It's just like obvious, amen, because there, when faith arises in somebody, you can see them going, yes, 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 praise the Lord, that's true, you know, that's so true. And, in, and, and really, there's a synergy that begins to happen in the spirit, even in a room like that. But by the same token, you know people that don't have an ounce of faith. And even though the Lord would want them to believe and to, to come into this great realm of favor and blessing from him, you know, they, they, they have never done that. You know, it's the easiest thing in the world to do. The easiest thing in the world to do is to get saved. It was the hardest thing for God to do to pay for that. But the easiest thing in the world for you to do is to get saved. Because really, there's only two options. Either you, one of these days, and, and I, I told Jeff after his, I said, man, there were some people in there that were so contrary, so opposed to grace. It was, it was unbelievable to me. It was unbelievable to me. I mean, they were actually mad. I mean, they, they, were, they were sizzling. You know, I could have cracked an egg on the back of their neck and fried it. They were so mad. <laughs> Why would you be mad? That Jesus has forgiven our sin. And it's not up to us. It's up to him. And that we believe that. Isn't that, isn't that a terrible message? Isn't that something to get all fired up about? <laughs> Praise God. Here's the option. One of these days, whether you believe it, whether you know it, whether you like it or not, one of these days, you're going to stand before God. And you're going to say, you're going to say, why do you have a right to live forever? And either you're going to say, I'm under the old covenant, and I come in my good deeds, and I come in my works, and I come with all the things that I did for the Lord. And you come up lacking. <laughs> I don't care how good you are. You're going to come up saying, wow, you are in serious trouble. Or you come before him. And you say, Jesus covered and forgave my sin. Jesus forgave my sin on the tree. And I come not in my own works, but I come, Father God, I come standing before you, forgiven by the power of the blood of Jesus. And, Je and, and, fa and Father is going to say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the way I see you, and that's the way you see yourself. So welcome into my glory. Amen? Amen. And, and so, you know, if you, want, if you want to be an old covenant person, that's what Paul said, you who want to be under the law, do you not hear the law? <laughs> that if you're guilty in any, uh, any detail of it, you're guilty of all of it. But if you're in grace, your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. Praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I mean, good lands. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and if you don't if you don't praise him now, you will praise him sometime because sometime that revelation will come to you. Where would I be without him? Even if it's even if, if you're standing before him, you're saying, Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. That by your grace, by your favor, by your unmerited favor. And so if you've never given your life to the Lord, I would so urge that. If you you know, I talk to a lot of people and they say, I don't know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. If you're not sure you're saved, please just just say, you know, I want to be sure. Because can you be sure? You know, the Bible says, and by this you know you have eternal life. By this you know you have eternal life. And where's our confidence at? In ourselves? No, our confidence is in Jesus and his perfect performance. Amen? Do you know? Say, I absolutely know. I used to think, 30 years ago, I used to think that was a prideful statement for me to say that, 35 years ago. That I know, that I know, that I know. But, but it really, it's the most humble thing you can say because all the weight goes to your faith in the Son of God 
and him taking away and forgiving their sins and raising from the dead. And I have perfect confidence in him. Amen. Amen. Say, I know. know. Amen. I know him whom I believe. Amen. Praise the Lord. And with great power, listen, there's great power when you give witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Whenever you... Whenever you really get settled into the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, great power begins to accompany your life, and you'll see the Lord begin to move in and through your life. Great power, uh, and with great power the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. When you really, really get settled on the resurrection of Jesus, there, there is a moment that happened on the face of the earth, whereby Jesus rose from the dead. Now look, in the spirit realm, God said, Behold the Lamb of God that died before the foundation of the world. It was always in God's eyes. It was always in his heart. I'm going to send the word down here, and he's going to die. I'm going to send the Lamb of God down here, and he's going to die. Behold the Lamb of God that died before the foundation of the world. God always had that plan, whereby he was going to rescue us. Praise the Lord. But there came a time of experience. There came a time when it literally, actually happened on the face of the earth. It wasn't just in God's eyes. It wasn't in his mind. In the fullness of time, God brought forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem us. Hallelujah. There was a time when Jesus did come to the earth. When the word became flesh, he was Jesus. He died as the Lamb of God. And there was a moment when he rose from the dead. And when he did, everybody that believes in him, in him now has access into this unlimited supply of God. The very blessing and favor of God has been opened up to you as you believe in the Lord. And he says, well, what, if that's true, then why am I living at such a, a, a diminished capacity? It's all got to do with how much you believe, how much you have faith in. I believe to the uttermost. Lord, I believe in the resurrection of Jesus, and I access his supply. I'm accepted in the beloved and I am blessed by God Almighty. Hallelujah. Because there is an accuser of the brethren, but it's not God. God will never accuse you because he punished Jesus for you. He punished Jesus for your sin, for your death. He'll never accuse you. The accuser of the brethren is the enemy to your soul, and he accuses you. He tries to get you to feel bad. He tries to get you to look at your faults. He tries to get you to look at your sins, look at your mistakes. But God would say, you're accepted in the beloved, and you're cleansed, and you're white as snow. And even though you used to be as, as <laughs> like scarlet, now you're as white as snow. Hallelujah. Woo! Praise the Lord. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He is good. And so, you know, we're, we're in a time when you begin to believe, look, you've accessed the very supply of God. Amen? If you're a business owner, if you're, if you're working, I, I just declare over you, this is going to be a great year for you to access favors coming in say i'm in a harvest season you are in a harvest season if you want to be jesus jesus said look look out at the fields they're white with harvest and you said there's two or three months to come he said no it's right now you're here look the heavens are open and you can access them by faith you don't have to wait to be blessed the supply is there amen, amen. and you enter that by faith so praise god you are in a harvest season say i'm in a receiving mode Amen. And look, you can receive. It, it doesn't have to do with anything. It doesn't have to do with supply. Right now it has to do with am I willing to receive? Am I willing to receive the bounty from the Lord? Am I willing to be blessed bumper crop wise from the Lord? Amen. Is that your heart? Amen. Praise the Lord. Do you need a healing? Do you need a healing? Is anybody hurting right here? I hurt so bad right here yesterday, I couldn't even walk. I mean, I, I just had to walk with a terrible limp all day. And uh, I don't know why, but when I got down last night and I began to pray, and I was down for like maybe 20, 30 minutes, and when I got back up, it was gone. It was absolutely gone. Kathy was saying, man, you look like an old man walking through here. I'm going to look, like, you know. But I was just hobbling and hobbling and hobbling. But when I pray, look, the Lord can take care of it. Amen. He can heal you. He's the healer. He is the healer. He's the Savior. He's, he's everything you need. And he's alive. And he's here right now. You don't, have to, you don't have to 
to, he, he's near, he's right here, he's, he's right here, he's in here, and he's all around here, and he says, you can access me by faith. You want to stay in a place of doubt and unbelief. A lot of people just say, but I, but, but he, you know, but I don't think I deserve it. I'm going to tell you, that's an incredible indictment against the blood of Jesus, that you would maintain that uh, obsolete opinion of yourself. Why? Well, I just don't, I just don't think I deserve it. I just don't think I should get anything God has for me. I tell you, that that is blown away by the power of the blood that has made you into a brand new person. Get rid of that old sad sack attitude, amen? Get rid of that. I mean, the Lord just wants to jerk that right out of you. Amen. Get rid of that. That's not, that's not even current. What you're doing is you're saying the power of the blood is not enough to cover what I've done. And God said, oh, really? I thought it, it is in my eyes. It's only in yours. And so I tell you, get rid of that right now in Jesus' powerful name. Amen. Say, I'm brand new. You are brand new. The Lord has declared you're brand new. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at... Uh, Look at uh, Psalm 67. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O oh, let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge people righteously. How do you know the Lord's going to judge people righteously? Because he judged Jesus for us. He judged the, the just and made him unjust. He judged the righteous and made him unjust. He, made, he judged the sinless and made him sin. He made him who had never seen or tasted death, and he made him death. He made him death itself. He was cut off for us who believe. God says, I've got an incredible lamb that I'm going to sacrifice for you once for all forever. And if you believe in him, you'll never be judged by me. I judge him for you. I judge him guilty, and I judge you righteous because you believe in him glory to God glory to God amen and govern the nations on earth let the peoples praise you oh God let the peoples praise you listen if you think I don't know if I should praise God or not just listen to what God says praise him praise him praise him for his excellent greatness amen amen then when you begin to praise God something happens in your life when you have an attitude of praise when you get away from complaining when you get away from thinking negatively when you begin to praise him and give him glory something happens the earth begins to yield its increase in your life what happens is when you just keep praising God Lord I thank you I thank you for the people you've put in my life I thank you for my family I thank you for my job Lord I thank you for my health. I thank you, Lord, that you've got your hand on me. I thank you, Lord, that you saved me. I thank you that you've, you've been so good to me, Lord. I just I give you praise. What happens is the earth, that which pertains to you, begins to show increase. Amen? You, you will begin to see. With nothing maybe you've done differently whatsoever other than your attitude, uh, things begin to spring up all around you. I mean, look, we're not in the greatest economy of the year. I've been, in, I've been doing the same thing I've been doing for 28 years. We had the best year we ever had this year. Praise God. I know Greg had a great year this year. I'm just telling you, when you begin to praise God, you're not working any harder. You're not doing anything any different. Yes, you're diligent. Yeah, you know the state of your flocks. You're not, you're not negligent. You're not, you're not a scoffer, but you're just doing what you should be doing. The Lord says, but you're giving me praise. So what you're going to find, you're going to find increase. The earth is going to begin to give its increase. And God, our God, shall bless us. Amen? Amen? When you begin to praise him, if you say, well, what can I do differently in 2015 that would, be, that would bring about radical change and increase in my life, you know what I'd say? Praise him. Praise Jesus. Praise. Give God praise. Give him, give him honor. Give him thanksgiving. Let it be from your heart. Let him be from your heart. Because when the favor of God comes upon you, you're blessed. Amen? You know, I, I did a, a, another funeral this week, and there, when God begins to show you favor, you're just blessed. Amen? There's no way to explain it. You're just blessed. But this guy lives in uh, Omaha, I think. And he was out. And I did his brother's funeral, funeral uh, several years ago. But he was up. And 
And, uh, you know, I talked to him a little bit. And, but he was pretty down. It was his grandma, and she, she raised him. But uh, then I called him the next day to see how he was doing. He said, you know, he said, uh, we stayed in Bloomington before we went back to Omaha. And he had tickets for the IU game. They played Iowa, and he had tickets for those, but he couldn't go to the game. It was, it was in Iowa because he had to be back here for this funeral. But he said, we stayed in Bloomington. It was New Year's Eve, and he said, you know, and then New Year's Day, he said, he, he graduated from IU, and he said, I, I went over to Assembly Hall and just hadn't been over there for years. And he said, and I saw where the Cook Training Building was over there. He said, I never, I'd never seen that. And I walked over there, and he said there was some guy, you know, walking outside. And he said, hey, this is a new building. He said, well, it's not that new. But he said, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful training center. He said, he said, would you like to come in and look around? He said, sure, you know. And so he, the guy brings him in. He just starts showing him all around this uh, Cook Training Center. And he said, and I looked over there, and he said, uh, he, said we were, he was just taking me on a tour around. He said, and we were going by. And he said, and I looked in this room, and he said, there was Coach Green. And he said, hey, hey. He said, hey, I saw where you guys beat Iowa. He said, uh, I'm going to go back and rub it in. He said, I'm from Omaha, but he said, I had tickets to the game. And he said, come on in here. And he, he, so he brought him in his office. He said, let me sign some stuff for you. Take back home. He started signing stuff to take back home. <laughs> and, he, and he said, uh, he called one of, the, one of the people over there. He said, hey, he said, have you ever had a tour of this? He said, no, I didn't even know it was here. He said, so he gave him a full tour of the thing. He said, he took him on the... He said, there's a tunnel that goes from there into assembly. He always said, he took him through that, and he's coming home with all this stuff. It's just favor. It's just favor. You know, I mean, one day, you know, he, he, he's down and out because he missed a game, and the next day he's talking to Coach Green, you know, <laughs> and he's signing stuff for him. Here, you know, take this too. Take this too, you know. And, and uh, when God blesses you, you're blessed. Amen? Amen. But there's, we can't work for it and we can't earn it, but it's just the favor of God. But will you receive? Will you receive all the favor God's got for you? Can your heart become so humble that you're willing to receive all that God has for you? And w would you receive all of his blessings? Can you believe it? You know why a lot of people don't receive it? It's because they, they've got this, this barrier up that I don't deserve it. But I declare you do deserve it on the grounds of Jesus Christ. You do deserve it. Amen? Say, I do deserve it. You do, because the Lord's paid for it. Amen? And I pray these things are broken. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Remember that old hymn? I love the new songs, but I, I, we, we used to sing old hymns. Remember the old hymn, uh, Higher Ground? Lord, lift me up. Lord, lift me up and help me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Oh, set my feet on higher ground. Amen? And the Lord said, I want to take you higher. And I want you to be able to stand higher because I have destined you to go higher. Don't resist my will for your life. Don't resist the blessings that I have for you. Open up your faith. Open up your faith. To me. Open, open up your belief in me and watch me do supernatural things. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at uh, Isaiah 45. I declare a sharpness in our spirit. Amen? I declare a a clearness and a sharpness in our spirit. In Jesus' name, amen? amen? Praise the Lord. I will go before you. The Lord's saying this. I'm going to go before you. I will go before you. I will make the crooked places straight. The Lord says, whatever, whatever's holding you back, I'm going to make, I'm going to go before you. Will you allow me to go before you? Will you allow me to make the crooked places straight? Will you allow me to change the things that I want to change about you. You know, one of the worst things that, 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 I, that I really need to change is, is my mouth. And everybody said amen. But, you know, I, I, I'm, you know I, like I always needling Kip, and I'm always needling Kathy. I'm always needling so many people. I said, Lord, change that in me. And sometimes he'll, he'll bring you to a place where you can feel so deeply what he wants to do. He, he doesn't want to keep saying, hallelujah, praise God. <laughs> But, you know, let the Lord change the things he wants to change about you. He will change them, amen? If you just, the Lord will never change anything about you unless you give him permission, amen? And just, you know, but just give him permission to change you. you Lord, you can change them, change them. Some people, you know, some people 
have things in their life, and, and, and I, I talked to Shirley a couple of weeks ago. You know, some people have things in their life that the Lord would have removed years, decades ago. But you just got to say, Lord, remove that thing. Take that thing. I guarantee you, Lord, the Lord is a good God. Amen? He is a good God. And, you know, the, the thing that, that he wants to do, he says, you know, we're better off to do it early than late. Amen? I mean, we really are. We're better off to say, change that in me. I know that. I know that's not of you, Lord. Change that in me, Jesus Christ. Do you have anything like that in your life? The Lord just saying, I will. I will. You give me permission. It's done in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I will break in pieces the gates of bronze and I'll cut the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places. See, all this stuff's here. All this stuff's out here. Everything that the Lord has is available right now through faith. But you can only reap what you can believe for. Amen? You can only reap what you can believe for. But if you believe for it, the Lord says, they're hidden treasures, but they're only hidden. Look, do you think the Lord wants to bless people who, who, who do uh, nothing but uh, sinful, demeaning things to human beings? Do you think that he only wants to bless those people with resources? No, he says, he, but the resources are available to you. And you can be blessed. And I tell you, money is just money is just uh, a part of the equation. Amen? Right. I mean, money is money. You, we have to have money. We do have money. But I tell you, grace is greater than money. Be, uh, 2 Corinthians 9.8. God is able. 2 Corinthians 9.8. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That you, having all sufficiency in all things, that you having all sufficiency in all things, might have an abundance for every good work. Now, that's, that's grace. That you, you know, it's not about how much I have, Lord, but I do know this, that your promise, your, that what I have access to, hidden treasures, your promise to me is God is able to make all grace abound that I might have all sufficiency in all things to do every good work work in other words he says money's not an issue resources are not an issue you'll have more than enough to do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it say praise the lord i mean good gravy people praise god say praise god that ought to that ought to make somebody happy and that's what he, that's that's the resource he says you have available to you amen and if, you th if, you, if you're a person that thinks in terms of lack, don't think in terms of lack. Think in terms of unlimited supply of God. Because that is true. Amen? You're not getting squeezed down. The Lord says, I open the heavens above you. And I pray a release of faith to receive it in Jesus' powerful name. Amen? Come awake, come awake, come and rise up from the grave.